Oh, hi. Welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Miniatures and Paint. Uh, this week we're going to be bringing you a Commissar Yark from the Imperial Guard. I don't know too much about this model. I uh, picked it up on a commission. So, this is how I painted it up. Check it out. Maybe you can get some ideas for when you're doing yours. So first we're going to be coming through with Vallejo Black Primer. A lot of this model is black, so we want to lay in some of this already just to get our work started for us. We're going to go through and change the tone, make it a little bit brighter on the folds, make it a little bit darker in the recesses. But this black is a good one to start from and we'll darken it and lighten it as we need to. All right, here we're coming through with Skaven Blight Dinge. I actually did a couple passes with the dry brush just because I didn't want it to be too streaky, too just up in your face. So we did a couple passes with a dry, dry, dry brush, light brush pressure, um, just trying to get it to build subtly. It's the one thing you don't want to do with this effect is sit there and just plaster it on and then you overdo it. You have to come back and start over. So just take your time with this, work it in slowly. Um, here in a second, we're going to come through with a thinned down version of this. And what we'll do is expand it from here. And here we're coming through with a thinned down version of the same paint, the Scape and Blight Dinge. We're just going through and filling in the areas where it didn't quite leave an opaque layer of the Scape and Blight Dinge on the tops. So we're just going through focusing on those, making sure it gets a nice layer. And then if we need to, we're using this to push it into the shadows. And that way it creates a good transition from the high points to the dark points. And next we're coming through with Mechanica Standard Gray. This is actually a very subtle highlight without having to change any properties or mix paint. We're just focusing on about 50% of what we laid down with the Scaven Blight Dinge already and just focusing towards higher and higher points to make it have a little bit more contrast to it. And now to reinforce the shadows a little bit more, we've got this thinned down pretty significantly, not quite to a wash, but almost. And we're just focusing on the recesses of the cloak, any dark areas where the light is going to be stopped by a fold in the fabric, and just putting that in, making it stand out as this is black. It's so easy with black to turn it to gray, so reinforcing this really helps. So back to the highlights, we're on to Dawnstone now. Now we're focusing on about 30% of what we had previously highlighted up. So you're just gonna go through, work this in, work very thin with this. That way it goes on, but it doesn't just create a real stark contrast. So his little power grabber thing, being supposed to be red, being that it started with black, we've gotta go with an intermediate color to get it to the red we want it to. So we're starting with corn red. We're gonna change it to uh, Mephiston red here in a second, but this is just to start getting these blacks onto the red spectrum. So we're doing the exact same thing here with Mephiston red. We're just completely covering all the corn red we did previously. Like I said, it wasn't to have any sort of shadows, anything like that. This is just to get that black to a red. And while you're doing this, you want to make sure that you hit his power grabber thing, his backpack, you want to hit his sashes, and he's got a couple ropes coming down on his side. Also his uh, holster to his pistol. That's an easily looked over detail that I even came back to and said, ooh, hey, you're supposed to be red. Let's hook it up. So just take your time, pick out the details on it. There's not too many. They're not too hard to get to, but if you don't see them, you can't paint them. Simple as that. So my boy Yarick here rivals the Space Wolves with the amount of gold on this individual model. We've got to do the entire wraparound on his robes. He's also got a ton of gold on his chest. He's got it on his belt. I mean, this dude is blinged out. So just take your time, work slow. I actually had to take a break trying to do this. I had a little bit too much caffeine on board. I was shaking. 
so we had to take a break come back to it if you find yourself struggling to paint clean solid lines take a break if, if you're you know too stimulated you're too cold what have you take a break otherwise it's just going to jack you up So, filming these videos creates a unique challenge that I had absolutely no idea, keeping these in frame. We played around with this a little bit throughout the course of this video, just trying to keep things in frame, trying different focal points, trying different uh, positions on the camera. This is interesting, so I know, you know, just watching it, it's easy to just look at it and go, huh, yeah, he, paint, he, he filmed it like shit. Yeah, sometimes you do. You know, it's just part of the learning process. This is my sixth video, so appreciate y'all for sticking on board with me, though. So now we're coming in with Vallejo Metal Color Silver. We're going to do his little grabber. We're going to do the barrel to a storm bolter. Um, there's not too much silver on him. The hardest part's just making sure that you get the claw completely, and then also the hydraulics on the back of the power claw. Alright, here we come in with some Wild Rider Red. We're just going through and putting in some nice crisp edge highlights throughout the model. Um, again, very difficult to get this on film for y'all, but just take your time, put these edge highlights in, use the edge of your brush where you can, like I am, and just lay these in. Take your time though. So next on to Kitty and Flesh Tone, we're going to go ahead and lay in his face and his hand. Not much flesh on this model, just those two. Um, give it the attention it deserves though. So next we're on to Wild Flesh. We're painting the green thing on this hat. In case y'all don't know what these are called, like I didn't, and had to friggin' spend 15 minutes Googling it, it's called a Laurel. So it's a Laurel wreath. We're painting that in Wild Flesh. Just, yes, that's our base color for it. Painting that on the bolter, <laughs> we're painting that on the hat. All right, next on the Mornfane Brown, the only thing we got brown on this model is the um, leather strap for his bolter. Just paint that in with the Mornfane Brown. We'll highlight it up here in a second. Be good to go. Now we're on to Reckland Fleche. We're just giving an all over wash to all the golds on him and his face. Not too much to give attention to here, but just hit it with a quick wash and we'll come through and highlight it up in a second. Make sure you give his face good attention. It's got a lot of deep details in it. And then on to Carabur Crimson. We thin this down with a little bit of uh, Army Paint or wash medium. And then we're just hitting this on all the red stuff throughout his body. So starting the process of highlighting all his golds, we're just going to start with Liberator Gold to begin with. Like I said, we hit this with Reikland a minute ago, so this is going to give us a good, part, good spot to start from. I'm kind of doing it as a wet dry brush, dragging it over the glue on his chest, and then we're being a little bit more selective throughout his robe, um, his shoulder pads, and the uh, little necklace he's got going on there.
So to highlight up the laurel, we're going to use a lesion green. We're just picking out the tips of the little leaves there. We're going to come through in a minute and shade that down. Give it a good uh, shadow in the recesses there. But as far as just highlighting up wall flesh, this is a really good color. I haven't ever tried this combo before, but I'm with it. Alright, on Acadian Flesh Tone, we're just coming back up and re-establishing some of the base tones that got washed out whenever we put the Reglan Flesh Shade on. Uh, make sure you hit his hand while you're at that step, just to kind of reinforce where the shadows are and then where his flesh color is going to be. Alright, now we're using Scrag Brown to go ahead and highlight up all the leather. It's actually very close whenever it dries, so you don't have to be too worried about it being a stark highlight. You can just come through and wash it with an Agrax and you're solid all day long. So continuing with the washes, next we're moving on to Gnome Oil. We're just hitting all of his metal bits. We're hitting his grabber, we're hitting his barrel of his gun. Um, any, any metal bits throughout his body, there's not too terribly many, but just give them the attention they need. So this is the first time I've tried this combo, but we're coming in with Liberator Gold and Vallejo Metal Color Chrome mixed one to one, and just coming through and picking up the highest points of the gold. We're also getting the uh, high points on the folds of his cloak. Um, it looks a little stark to begin with, but we wash it down again after this and it looks great. So just give that a try next time. Alright, coming through with Keys Look Flesh, he's got a really well sculpted face, so it blends itself very well to laying in good highlights throughout the face. Um, just go through and pick the highest points out where the Cadian was a while ago, and then work it up from there. Alright, so here's that Reikland Flesh Shade Part 2 I was talking about. It's, it's really stark. I mean, you can see a nice hard line between the Liberator Gold, the Chrome, and the um, previous layer of Liberator. Once you hit it with this wash, though, it just melts it together and smooth as butter. So now we're looking at that word, green shade. Just coming through and pick, putting it in the uh, laurels around the hat and around the gun. All right, so here we're coming in with Screamer Pink for the wax seal of the Purity Seal. Unfortunately, I don't know where the footage went for it. I highlighted it up with uh, Screamer Pink in the next step, and unfortunately that footage just turned into free atoms. So it happens, part of the learning process of doing these videos for y'all. And then finally, Xandru Dust. So we just go ahead and lay that down over the Purity Seal. We come through later with some Shabby Bone and then Screaming Skull for our final highlight colors. Again, the footage, I, I think I ran out of memory space on the card. Like I said, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to produce better quality content for y'all. It's just part of the game. So here's our finished product. Um, customer's super happy with it. I'm super happy with it. Uh, as many of you know, painting black robes and getting them to translate as black can be very challenging. This is actually a very low stress way to knock this out, make it look good. So, try it, see what y'all can do with it. Um, honestly, I tried to do the contrast paints and it just didn't do it for me. So, again, this is Kevin with Black Dot Miniatures and Paint. Thank y'all for watching this. If y'all liked it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.